Good morning. I want to welcome you to this worship experience at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. It's Easter morning, and I remember as a child getting up early on Easter mornings, and we would go to my grandfather's house. He lived on a small hill. My grandfather was a retired Evangelical United Brethren uh, pastor and then United Methodist as after the merger. And uh, a part way up the hill, or knob as we called them in southern Indiana, he lived on Pilot Knob. Uh, part way up the hill there was a clearing and a cross. And on Easter Sunday, the people from the local United Methodist Church there would gather in that clearing and we would have sunrise worship. And I have these vivid memories as a child of holding my father's hand and watching the sun come up over my grandfather's shoulder and uh, with the cross there beside him and experiencing the joy and beauty of Easter uh, morning uh, sunrise service. So this morning, I, I just want to pray that whatever darkness you are living in today, that we can experience the sunrise of Christ's resurrection in our, uh, in our life at this moment. And so I just want to say Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us experience this resurrection as we worship this morning. Welcome to St. Mark's. Good morning. Let's all join together in singing hymn number 302, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Christ is risen. Happy Easter, St. Mark's, and it's good to be worshiping with you this morning. My name is Pastor Julia, and I've got a few announcements for you. As we continue in the health crisis, 
just be, remember that even though we're not using the church building, we are still the church. We are still seeking to live into our call to be people who live their lives with mission as a way of life. And we have a few new Bible studies that are going to be happening soon, as well as some Bible studies that are continuing and are happy to welcome new members. Be sure to check out the St. Mark's uh, website to s learn more about the adult discipleship opportunities, as well as student ministries under the Grow tab. And speaking of student ministries, Cornerstone Youth Group will be meeting tonight at 5 o'clock on a Zoom meeting. Uh, and then for another announcement, another Zoom meeting that will be happening is one that I think will speak to a lot of people in the congregation right now. Uh, Career Curve is a ministry that we don't always talk about a lot here at St. Mark's, but it is an important ministry that we offer uh, for those who, for various reasons, find themselves without employment. Career Curves is a means for meeting with others to work on your resume, to work on skills, to think about job opportunities and career opportunities, and to talk with people who are in a similar situation and facing similar struggles. So this group will be meeting at 10 a.m. on Monday in a Zoom meeting. And if you'd like more information about that, please uh, reach out to the church office. We will help you get connected. And moving to offering, please remember that even though we are not using the building, we are still being the church and your financial donations do make a huge difference and makes an impact on what we're able to do how we're able to support others, and tithing is still a part of what we're called to do, even in this strange time. And one way that you can tithe and give is with our mission focus for April, which is to the Fletcher Place Community Center. Fletcher Place is located near Fountain Square in Indianapolis and provides a variety of services for their homeless and low-income neighbors. Uh, they offer a thrift store, a food pantry, hot meals, a preschool, and a community garden. In light of the current health crisis, and in seeking to protect the health and safety of all people in the mission field, uh, we are here at the church suspending in-kind donations and asking people to instead help support the food pantry to support Fletcher Place uh, through monetary contributions so that they may remain open during this ongoing health crisis. Uh, please visit stmarkscarmel.org slash give to donate. And remember that because you give, St. Mark's gives. As we turn to a time of prayer and contemplation, let us remember our community, our state, our nation, and our world our leaders who are in need of our prayers as we seek to join together in the face of this health crisis, and also as we seek to live life and continue to live into God's purpose for us, even in the midst of chaos. Would you please join me in prayer? Almighty God, this morning, the day of your son's rising from the grave, we are taking refuge behind locked doors like the disciples of old. Rather than our normal traditions, we are having to figure out how to live and work and be your people in this new world where everything we knew has been turned upside down. And in that way, God, we're not so different from the original 12. Lord, just as you appear to your disciples, let your spirit now speak a message of hope into our hearts that we may be inspired and remember that Christ did not need human help, that Christ did not need human hands to pull him up from the grave, but always and forever, we are the ones in need of Christ. Help us to remember that, Lord. And so together we say, our voices sounding together, with the saints that came before us and the saints who will come after us, Christ is risen. Amen.
was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met I was breathing Feet 
rose to dance When death was arrested My life began Oh, your grace So free Washes over me You have made me It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore He canceled my debt and he called me his friend oh, When death was arrested in my Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost But then Jesus rose with us Our gospel lesson this morning is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where he, they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciples, and they went toward the tomb. 
They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen claws lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been on his head not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must come, must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the foot. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know what it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
certain life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power A few years ago, I was introduced to a children's story by Judith Vorst, which is called Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Alexander writes this little monologue about a terrible day that he had, and I want to share part of the story with you. He says, I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair, and when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box, but in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickon liked Paul's picture of a sailboat better than my picture of an invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And so on and on it goes as Alexander recounts his day. And over and over again, he, he says, I could tell it was going to be a, a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And he repeatedly uh, repeats his threat to move to Australia. And at the end of the day, he says, when I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that, even in Australia. And so I think about this uh, Easter Sunday, about the disciples, and they probably were saying to themselves, it's been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad couple of days. Jesus has died, which we didn't expect. And we've lived through this horrible Saturday of, of in-between time. And now this morning, some of the women in the, the circle of the disciples have gone to the tomb to try to uh, prepare Jesus' body for burial and to uh, do the things that they would have liked to have done on Friday, but couldn't because they entered into the Sabbath time. And so they come to the tomb, and they find a surprise. The tomb has been uh, opened and rolled away. Uh, the stone has been rolled away. Now, most of us have experienced at some point in our lives terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. For me personally, I have experienced those in my life, and uh, we're coming up on an anniversary uh, for us. On May 6, 2010, our 20-year-old son, Ian, died. It will be 10 years ago in May. And I've been thinking about that a lot. And if I were to divine in my life terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days, May 6, 2010 would really be at the top of the list. 
And on that day, I remember feeling the emptiness and sadness and anger and all of those emotions um, that not only filled that day, but the days that followed as I grieved the loss of my son. And so I think about uh, the disciples and God on this day as God's son has been entombed. And I think about the disciples as they are very uh, grieving and in powerful ways. And I think this is what it's like to live between Good Friday and Easter. And all of us have those Good Friday, uh, Holy Saturday times in our lives where we feel like we are living uh, in that terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day sort of way. And we have not quite yet reached Easter resurrection. And so uh, we think about where, what are we are experiencing today. And I think many of us feel like we are entombed right now in our homes, in our lives, because we are in an in-between time. We know something's coming, but we don't know exactly what that will look like. We know this uh, COVID-19 virus is, is in our midst, it's out there, and, and we're sort of frightened by it. Uh, because we know that there will be people in our circle of friends that will be affected by this virus if they haven't been already. We know that there will be people in our, in our congregation, in our church family, who will uh, most likely uh, be affected directly by this, uh, this uh, virus. And so we have this anticipatory feeling that something is coming. And, uh, and so we grieve uh, the reality that we thought life was, and we are living in that sense of this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. But in the midst of those feelings, in the midst of the disciples uh, lamenting what they have lost, there is Easter. There is resurrection. The women came to the tomb wondering who would roll the stone away. And it's kind of interesting that that's the problem they were focused on. Who would roll this stone away? And in some ways, uh, our life is like that as well, because we think of the very mundane, everyday problems. How will we get groceries? How will we run our errands? How will we check on those that we love? How will we show compassion? And those are important questions, just like who would roll the stone away was an important question. Because if the stone wasn't rolled away, they couldn't get to Jesus' body to prepare him for burial. But it was a small question in the midst of the much larger plan that God had. And so as they thought about who will roll this stone away, uh, I think that the, the real surprise for them was that not only was that problem solved, but something much bigger happened. The Greek writer, Nikos Kansantikos, uh, tells about a monk who had long planned to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to see the Holy Sepulcher. Uh, Kansantikos writes, he said, this monk did finally begin with the money he had saved over 40 years, and soon after he left the monastery, he passed a field where a pale, emaciated man was digging roots out of the ground, and he said to, uh, this man said to the monk, good morning, father, where are you going? The monk replied, I'm going to Jerusalem to see the Holy Sepulchre where Christ was buried, and I'm going to march around it three times and pray. The man in the field said, that trip will cost a lot of money. Yes, said the monk, all my life's savings. Then the man suggested, Father, why not march around me three times and give me the money so that my wife and children might live? And the monk did. Now we may be surprised by this monk's action. The monk never saw where Christ was buried as he had planned. But as Consanticus reminds us, the monk did see where Christ was alive and living in other people. The good news is that God has gone ahead of us. God goes ahead of us even to the point of death to roll away those stones that are blocking us from God's good plan for our life. When we were children, 
we often found ourselves uh, standing in line or being uh, set in order. And as one person has observed, observed uh, in those childhood experiences, there are really two kinds of experiences. One is a me first kind of experience. That's when you're, you're in line for something uh, that you are looking forward to. Maybe your favorite dessert or at the ice cream store or in line for your favorite ride at the amusement park. You want to go first. You want to be as far up in that line as you can be. But there are also those times when we are in what one person has described as the you go ahead kind of circumstances. In those circumstances, we're probably in line for something that's less than desirable. Uh, maybe to uh, get a shot or maybe uh, to uh, recite for our class, or to be called upon to provide an answer. And so in those circumstances, we might say, no, you go ahead. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'll give my report later, or I'll do whatever it is after, after you. You go ahead. In the resurrection, we have a, a great example of a you-go-ahead kind of moment. When it comes to death and new life, Jesus went ahead of us. He went ahead of us into, onto the cross and experienced the pain of death, provided this moment of resurrection, which gives us hope, which gives us a sense that death and entombment are not the final chapters of God's story. Now, if we're really honest about the feeling the empty tomb brings, most of us uh, realize that it's a feeling of relief. It's a feeling of safety and, and reassurance. The good news of Easter morning is that we are a people who have looked around at the sinfulness and shortcomings and that we all experience in our lives. We have looked ahead to the finality of death and judgment. We have looked ahead to this time, and we sidle up to Jesus, and we, we say to Jesus, you go ahead, and we will follow behind you. This morning, we are living in uncertain times. We are living in Easter morning before the resurrection, before the sun has risen. And the good news for us is that Jesus is going ahead of us. That there is nothing that we will experience in life right now that Jesus has not already experienced. And there is no doubt, no uncertainty that we experience that the resurrection hasn't answered in our lives. If God goes ahead of us into pain and suffering, torture and death, then how can we doubt that God will be ahead of us wherever life may take us even in quarantine situations and illness. Just as Jesus was going ahead of the disciples into Galilee, the risen Christ will go ahead of us into this new world. Do people, in a sense, this raises the question, do people come to pay homage to a dead body like the women did as they were going to the tomb and the early disciples? Or is the body alive? Ever wonder what the number one reason is for people to go to church? A survey of 26 mainline congregations in the United States revealed that the number one reason that people go to and return to a congregation is this, that the congregation acts like it really believes in Jesus is alive through a collective effervescence that pervades everything that is done. The church cannot be a dead body if it wants to represent the resurrected Christ in the world. Let me say that again. We can't be a dead body if we want to represent the resurrected Jesus Christ. Many of us are living in difficult times. Many of us are discouraged right now. We're, we're frightened. But one of the things that I've been inspired about in these last few weeks is how people have come alive to this moment. How people have reached out in new ways to care for their neighbors and friends. How we have discovered new ways to connect and to be the body of Christ. How we have found ways 
to, uh, to provide missions, to provide food, to do things for people, even in the midst of this difficult, almost in-tuned time. The resurrection of Jesus Christ breaks into our lives when we are willing to let it, and we can show the resurrected Jesus to other people. We don't serve a dead body. We serve an alive, risen Christ. And if we want to be the church, we can't be a dead body and serve the resurrected Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus calls us to be alive to one another, even in the midst of our uncertainty and doubt. And so I just pray that as we experience these times, that we might also experience Easter, that we might experience the power and presence of Jesus Christ as we reach out to one another, that we might know God's Spirit in us so that we can be messengers of God's resurrection to others. I want to close with these words from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah writes, Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Let us pray. Almighty and holy God, it is Easter morning, and we wait for your resurrection. We want to be alive to you and alive to one another. And so we pray, O oh God, that you might pour out your Spirit upon us. Help us to know the power of new life in you. And even in these uh, days of uncertainty, these days of fear, we pray, O oh God, that you might appear to us once again. Help us to be reborn in your presence. Turn our broken hallelujahs into shouts of joy. And so we pray, O oh God, that you might be with us as we worship you and as we serve one another in the love and name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all join together in singing hymn number 310, He Lives. Savior is in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever fools may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always here. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy past. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find, none other.
Father is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And now may you go in the peace and presence of Jesus Christ. May you know in your entombed moments the power of the resurrection and let us be alive to one another as we serve in Jesus' name. Go in God's peace.